Okay, so to access my videos, you just go on my CCA, and then you click on it on that video, and then what will come up is the whole playlist, and you'll see over here. Oh, this isn't the play. Oh gosh, that's annoying. Um, but if you go to my channel, you see how I just went to my channel. Yeah, I'll change it so you'll click in it and it'll go right to it. But you see this playlist here, Geometry 2017, 2018. Um, so right now I've got lesson six one, six two, six four, and six five on there. I don't know why I didn't record six three, but I didn't. Um, and I'll record six six. So when you're reviewing for the test, you can actually just go through and watch the, all those videos. And I'll have the test review up there as well. So just make sure you guys are are checking on that um, and using that tool because it's I really think it's a really valuable resource. Um, okay, so with that said, let's get into it. What are we studying today, guys? Kites and trapezoids. Simple as that. Kites and trapezoids. What's the section that we're on? What are all these shapes? They it begins with Q, quad, quadrilaterals, and they're all what? Parallelograms, okay? We've been studying a whole bunch of parallelograms, okay? So what have we studied so far? Well, who can remind me of some of the shapes we've studied so far? The wrong bus. The wrong bus. The wrong buses. The wrong bus. We've studied the, the rectangles, right? What else have we studied? Angles. Well, yeah, but in this section, squares. Good. Okay. So we've studied parallelograms. Then in our special parallelograms, we studied squares, rectangles, and rhombuses. So we just studied regular parallel parallelograms, and we studied squares, uh, rectangles, and rhombuses. Now we're adding to that list with the two last ones for this section, kites and trapezoids. Okay? So just really quickly, um, what do I know about a rhombus? All the sides are equal. Equal. Congruent. Congruent. All the sides of a, of a rhombus are congruent. What do I know about the angles of a rectangle? They're all what kind of angles? 90 degree right angles in a rectangle, right? And what do I know about the sides of a parallelogram? The opposite sides are all parallel. parallel. And, um, okay, incongruent. All right. Um, so now we're walking into this new section here, Lesson 6, Properties of Kites and Trapezoids. So the first thing that we're going to study is a kite. So let's take a look at that, and let's see if we can fill that in. So look at the picture and see if you can fill the blanks in. I'll give you just 15 seconds. A kite is a quadrilateral, a quadrilateral with exactly, this is a picture of a kite with exactly blank pairs of blank sides. Okay. How many pairs of what kind of sides? That's what you're thinking. Bam. Nice, Matthews. Two pairs of congruent sides. There you go. Here's a, a pair of congruent sides right there. And here's another pair of congruent sides. So it's two pairs of congruent sides. All right? If all the sides are congruent, then it's what kind of shape? Square. A rhombus. A rhombus. a rhombus. rhombus has all the sides congruent. A square also has all sides congruent, but we know a square is a rhombus and a rectangle as well. It's both of them. Okay? So if, if not all the sides are congruent, but it's got exactly two pairs of congruent sides, then I've got a kite. Okay? Two pairs of congruent sides. That's a kite. All right. So let's take a look at um, some of the properties of a kite. So go ahead and read 661 over in your book. All right, now, I'm actually gonna do this a little differently today. So let's take a look at this kite really quick. Let's take a look at this kite. And then if I draw a line from B to D, 
What kind of line is that? What's that called? What's the name of that line? Begins with a D. What's the name of that line? Marcus, you can close your computer. It's called a diagonal. Okay? And if I draw a line from A to C, what's the name of that line? A diagonal. There you go. What do I notice about those two diagonals? They are? Mm, they don't bisect each other. They are what? Perpendicular. Those two diagonals are perpendicular, right? Does that make sense? You guys see that? Okay. What do I notice? Okay, so the diagonals are perpendicular. What do I notice, guys, about um, these two blue triangles? They're congruent. What do I notice about these two yellow triangles? They're congruent. Well, what does that mean about, like, this angle and this angle? They're congruent. Or this angle and this angle is congruent. Or this angle and this angle. Congruent. This angle and this angle. You see it? You see what's happening? Okay. So these two diagonals are forming two pairs of congruent triangles as well. You see that? Okay. So that's just a little visual about a kite. Is it called a kite because it looks like a kite? Yeah. I think so. Or maybe a kite is called a kite because it's a kite. Sorry. <laughs> I know that was like super deep for a second. Maybe like which came first, the shape or the actual thing that you play with? Yeah, like, well, like the same thing with like the fruit. What came first, the color or the fruit? Like orange? Yeah. I would probably say that the fruit came first. They named the color after the fruit. Did they name the color after the fruit? I don't know. Whoa, this is too deep, you guys. We should just call the man of yellows from now on. Exactly. <laughs> Alright. So, we're, we're stumbling too deep. We have to yeah, here. yeah, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta back up. Alright, so, if a quadrilateral is a kite, then its diagonals are perpendicular. That's exactly what we just showed. So, so, okay, how do we write this? Look, oh man, wow, has this been there the whole time? What? All these things? Yeah. yeah. They have been. Wow, a kite diagonals perpendicular. Look at that. That's so cool. All right. Look at the things you noticed. Amazing. All right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. So, so if it's a kite, then the diagonals are perpendicular. Cool. All right. 662, six, go ahead and read that one over. Okay, so guys, what do I notice about these two blue angles that are opposite? What are they? They're congruent, right? What about this angle as compared to like this angle, the green and the yellow? Are those congruent? No, no they're not congruent. But those two, it's got exactly one pair of opposite angles. So that's what it says. Kite, one pair of opposite angles is congruent. Okay. That makes sense. And remember this equal sign with the little squiggle on top? That means congruent. So just one pair of angles is congruent. Just one pair. Okay. Um, so is this is this a parallelogram, guys? Is that a parallelogram? Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 It's not a parallelogram. Wait, why? <laughs> is this side parallel to that side? No. No. So is that a parallelogram? So we're out of the realm of parallelograms for, for these ones. Does that make sense? What's the difference between a kite and a parallelogram? A kite is not a parallelogram. Does that make sense? So a rhombus has all a, a rhombus has all the sides congruent. A kite has two pairs of congruent sides. Does that make sense? In a rhombus, like they would all be the same exact length. Does that make sense to you? Okay. All right. Okay, so now with that, you guys should be able to do the questions that are right here. So I'm going to give you a minute. They're a little bit tough, but um, I'm going to give you a minute. So go ahead and do them.
Go ahead and work on those. Focus, focus, focus. Does anyone have a pencil I can use? I don't have any pen. What can I use pen? You can use pen. Marcus and Olivia. Okay. All right. Okay. But I don't want. I don't want to. I believe you. Okay. All right. I know most of you guys probably aren't done, but I just want to move forward. So let's take a look. The measure of angle FEJ, that's FEJ, is 25. So that's 25 degrees. Guys, I was just telling Andrea, like, a really good place to start here is to mark it on the diagram so it's visual. Nice. Good job. Good job. So mark it on the diagram so it's visual. FGJ, that's this one here, is 57 degrees. There you are. So now it's a little bit more visual. Now it says find each measure. So GFJ, that's GFJ, that's this right here, this angle here. It wants us to find the measure. Okay, the question is how? How do we do that? Well, any ideas? Let's, let's take a look. What is this shape right here that I'm outlining with my little cursor here? It's a triangle. What do I know about the measures of all the interior angles of a triangle? They add up to 180, right? What do I know about this angle here? It's 90. So if this is 90 and that's 57, they add up to because that's a property of a kite. Oh, true. Yes. So 90 plus 57 equals 147. How would I find the green angle? 180 minus 147 equals 33 degrees. So there you go. Does that make sense to you guys? 33 degrees. Another way, guys, that you don't have to do this, look, if you know, it's a little confusing, so just don't be confused. If, if this doesn't work for you, then fine. But if you know one of the angles is 90 degrees, then the other two just have to add up to 90. Does that make sense? Oh. If one of them is 90, then the other two just add up to 90. So, so 57 plus 33 is 90 degrees. So you don't have to add them both together. You can just say, okay, that's 90. So if this is 57, that's got to be 33 because 33 plus 57 is 90. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So that's just a quicker way to do it if you don't want to add them up every time. All right. The next one is the angle JFE. So where is JFE? That's this one right here. Okay. At this point, you guys should know how to do this one, right? What do I know about this angle right here? First off, what's this shape that I'm outlining? A triangle. A triangle, right? And what do I know about that angle right in there? It's 90, it's 90 degrees as well. So what do I know about um, what do I know about the blue and the yellow angle? The blue and the yellow. What do they have to add up to? 180. They all have to add up to 180, or the blue and the yellow have to add up to. Oh, 90. 90, right? Does that make sense? So I just do 90 minus 25, and I get 65, 65 degrees. So there you go. That's now 65 degrees. Does that make sense? Let me go all these right so we Praise God. All right. Now the last one is right here. 
G-H-E, G-H-E, that's this angle right here. Now, what do I know about this angle and this angle? The gray angle and this gray angle here. They're congruent. So what do I do? That's right, 65 plus 33 is equal to 98 degrees, which also is the temperature of the body. 98 plus 33. Temperature of what? Temperature of the body. 98? 98 plus 63. That's 98 degrees. Yeah. 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 So is that when you have like 100 degrees for you, it's really bad? No, if you have like 105 degrees for you, that's really bad. Or 103. Yeah, there's no number. 101. Mm hmm. At 105, it's like risk of death. 105 for real? If you have a 105 degree temperature, you need to go to the hospital. Usually. Well, I was in the hospital. I think I think you were in the hospital, though. Yeah. Right, yeah. You were probably super sick. Once someone has like 102 degrees for you, you'd yeah. be, be dead. You'd be vegetable. Or 102? Well, no, oh, oh okay. <laughs> when you came back from where? <laughs> really? Yeah. Get a high fever? <laughs> really? <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. That's crazy. Praise God. Um, all right. Let's recapitulate. Sorry, that's not the right word. Let's let's recapture our focus because now we're moving on to this this next part, and this one is called a what? What does it say? That yellow trapezoid. Trapezoid. Good. Good. I got a joke about this one, and I'll share it with you guys in a little bit. No, I, I, I have to I have to share it with you guys in a little bit. No, no, no. I'll share it. I have to get. It. Get it, get moving. Okay, a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with ac exactly blank pair of blank sides. Okay. Exactly blank pair of blank sides. What do you think? First off, the first one should be easy because it can't be two because it's not a plural pair. So it's just one pair of what sides? Congruent, Congruent sides. Good. Or no, parallel side, sorry. Parallel. One pair of parallel sides. You see these blue sides here? Those are parallel. Okay? So one pair of parallel sides. And then I'm sorry if you can't really see it. I, that blue, I printed it out too dark. Each parallel side is called a what? Just look at your diagram. It's called a base. Each parallel side is called a base. And each non-parallel side, look at your diagram, is called a leg. Very good. Next one says, okay, so here we go. One pair of parallel sides. The parallel sides are the base, bases. The non-parallel sides are the legs. Is this a parallelogram? Is this a parallelogram? No. Yeah. Wait. Do I have two pairs of parallel sides? Yes. Oh, are these sides parallel? No. 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 So it's only one pair of parallel sides. Yeah. See? Oh, so it is. It's a half parallel. No, so it's not, not a parallelogram. Could you I think in the beginning of this lesson I said we were going to keep studying parallelograms, and that kind of confused you. We're studying quadrilaterals in chapter six. What's your quadrilateral? Okay, quadrilateral has how many sides? Four. Four sides. That's right. Okay. So look, how many parallel sides? How many pairs of parallel sides is a parallelogram? One. Each a parallelogram has two pairs of parallel sides. Oh How many parallel sides do I have here? One. one. Just one pair. So it's not a parallelogram. Wait, Mr. Munir, so yeah. that's not a parallelogram. It's not a parallel. It's a trapezoid, which is a quadrilateral. So why are we talking about parallelograms if we're not talking about parallelograms? We're not talking about parallelograms. Oh. That's, say it's not a parallelogram. It's not a parallelogram. I'm just showing you that it's not a parallelogram. Okay, base angles are two what angles whose common side is a blank? Two consecutive. Because they're right next to each other, you see that? Whose common side is a what? What's the side that they share? 
Is it a base or a leg? Base. It's a base. Okay, so the base angles are the ones that are on the base. Does that make sense? So here's base angles for this base. Here are the base angles for this base. Does that make sense? Each base has a pair of base angles. Is that pretty clear to you guys? So that's a pair of base angles, and that's a pair of base angles. All right, and the last one is, if the legs are congruent, then it is a what trapezoid? It is an, you guys don't necessarily know this, it's an isosceles trapezoid. In an isosceles triangle, let me study that in an isosceles triangle, we know the legs are congruent. In an isosceles trapezoid, the legs are congruent. Mark, switch it over. I see it again. I'm taking it. And I'm calling your mom from it. Right. Be like, what's up, mama? What's up, pop? How's it going? No, this is not Marcus. This isn't Marcus. No, no, it's his teacher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in math class. All right. Okay. So, you got all the vocab. Here's the vocab. Now let's move it a step forward. That's the vocabulary. Let's go through the theorems. Okay. First theorem 663. I'm going to move fast because we're kind of already a little bit behind. If a quadrilateral is an isosceles trapezoid, then each pair of base angles is congruent. This is an isosceles trapezoid. Why is it isosceles? Look at those legs. Because those legs are congruent. They're congruent, right? Okay. Oh, here's my joke, right? Okay, wait. What do I know? <laughs> wait, what do I know about the one pair of sides of a, of a trapezoid? They're parallel. They're parallel. They're parallel. Okay, what kind of... Uh, there's, so there's this animal. It's called a zoid. It's this crazy animal on, an, on like an alien planet, right? And this guy wants to trap one. This guy wants to trap one, so like, he's a hunter, he's like a zoid, right? And so, so he's, he goes to this, he, he goes to this, uh, um, this uh, cage designer, right? And he goes, look, I need a cage. And two of the sides, I, they, they can't be parallel, but another two sides, they have to be parallel. So it's only one pair of parallel sides. And the cage designer's like, like, man, like, why do you need such a specific cage with only one pair of parallel sides? What are you trying to do? And he says, I'm trying to trap a zoid. I said, wait, wait, no, 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 um, if a quadrilateral is an isosceles trapezoid, then the base angles are congruent. You see that? Base angles are congruent. If a trapezoid has one pair of congruent base angles, then it's an isosceles trapezoid. So look, if I've got a pair of congruent base angles, then it's an isosceles trapezoid. The last thing, a trapezoid is isosceles if and only if its diagonals are congruent. So this is all about isosceles trapezoids here, right? You see this? Isosceles trapezoids, the base angles have to be congruent and the diagonals have to be congruent. Is that clear? Isosceles trapezoid, the legs, the base angles, and the diagonals are congruent. Wait, so the, um, so angle, like for the first one, angle B and angle C have to be equal to 180? No, they're congruent. So then, oh, oh they're the same angle. Yeah, they're, like the, they're the same angle, exactly. And then angle B and angle A would have to be equal to 180. Yeah, right. yeah, it doesn't say that here. I don't know why, but that's, that's true. All right, you guys, now let's do some example problems. So we're not quite there yet. We have to get through some stuff. I don't know if I'm going to have time to give you guys a quiz today. I'm probably going to sign it for you guys for homework or something like that. Um, okay, let's take a look at this. Find the measure of angle Y. So yeah, I guess that's weird that it doesn't say that. Okay, if the, oh, wait. Does it say that for the trapezoids? Um, no, it doesn't. Okay, find the measure of angle Y. So this is 117. So that means Y, the opposite angles, have to add up to 180. So if this is 117, then this one has to be 180 minus 117, which is 63 degrees. Okay? So that's 63 degrees. Does that make sense? Okay.
okay? Here we have an isosceles trapezoid. So what do we know about the diagonals? In an isosceles trapezoid, the diagonals are congruent. So it says RT, this one here, RT is 24.1. QP equals 9.6. That's QP is 9.6. Find PS. PS is here. Well, what do I know about QP and PS? They have to add up to 24.1. If these, if these diagonals are congruent, then, then PS is 24.1 minus 9.6, which is equal to 14.5. So PS is 14.5. Does that make sense? We're going super fast right now. I just said we're going super fast right now. Is that pretty clear? Look, what do I? What did I do here? These two angles are supplementary, so they add up to 180. Right? Is that pretty clear? These diagonals, because it's an isosceles trapezoid, these diagonals are congruent. So if this is like 9.6 and this is 24.1, then this has to be 14.5. And easier numbers, if this was like 20 and this was 5, then this would have to be 15. Does that make sense to you guys? Because yeah. 5 plus 15 would equal 20. Is that pretty clear? Okay. Next. Um, this is the last thing. Well, I'd really like to go through that, but um, the mid-segment. So go ahead and, and turn to the next page. And then we're just going to go into the Kahoot. The mid-segment of a trapezoid is a segment whose endpoints are the blanks of the legs. This one is midpoints. Yeah. So here's the mid-segment from X to Y. Okay. And its endpoints are the midpoints of the legs, right? So it's right in the middle of each leg. Does that make sense? You see that? Here are the bases. How do I know which one are the bases? Because the bases are what? P to the P parallel. parallel. The bases are parallel. Okay? So the midpoint, here are the legs, then the, the mid-segment has endpoints at the midpoints of each one of the legs. And then what does this theorem say? Go ahead and read that to yourselves. Okay. Its length is one half the sum of the lengths of the bases. Okay, that means if I add this one and this one together, then this will be half of that. Okay? So let's take a look at this example problem. How do I find, look, if this one is 31, then what's this one? Well, I know that these two added together, this will be half of that, right? So one half of x plus 38 equals 31. Does that make sense? Half of the sum. So to solve, I multiply by 2. I get x plus 38 equals 62. Then I subtract 38 from both sides, and I get x equals 20. Four. So this side is 24. 31 times 2. I multiplied by 2 on both sides. Okay. What do you notice about these numbers? 24, 31, 38. What do you notice about them? They're getting bigger. Yep. Yeah. By how much? By 7. By 7 each time, right? So look, if I've got... This is the mathematical way to do it. You understand? But the simple way to check is, oh, if I've got one of the bases in the mid-segment, well, 38 goes down to 31 by 7, so this one's got to go by 7 as well. Does that make sense? So it's 38, 31, oh, it's got to be 24. See? Just subtract 7 each time. Yeah? If, if like, that is up there, like, 38 and said 39, and it's 8 and 5, can you just do, like, 31 times 8? Yeah. 
You don't have to do all that, but you should understand that this is why. So, like, if you put it directly because you just did that, like, you wouldn't get it wrong, no? Okay. No. Yes, ma'am, sir. If we got it on the test, do we have to put that word? No. That's what I'm saying. You don't have to. Okay. Just, you just got to see, like, look, and then look. But if I want to find this one, say I'm given just this one, 24 and 38, well, the easiest way to do that is just to add those two together. What's 24 plus 38, class? 24 plus 38. 24 plus 38. 62. What's 62? What's half of 62? 31. 31. You see? Okay. All right. You guys ready to kahoot? Sure. Guys, we're not going to have time to do the quiz, but you're going to be responsible for doing that quiz on your own, okay? What? What? I'd rather do the Kahoot because this is going to be a review. Um, yeah, you're going to have to do the quiz on your own today. What was that? Yeah. I'll do my best. All right, let's do this. All right, you guys ready? Go. The measure of VYZ is 49. Find the measure of VZY. So VYZ is 49. Find VZY. That's 49. Find VZY. Take a look, guys. Look at this shape, right? What's that? Triangle, right? Okay, that angle is 90 degrees, so what do I know about those two angles? They have to add up to 90. So 49 plus 41 is 90 degrees. 3, 2, 1, 41. 41 plus 49 is 90 degrees. Sam takes the lead. Find the measure of angle A. Measure of angle A, you're given the measure of angle C, find the measure of angle A. So here's C. If you're asked for this angle, what do you know about them? They are not congruent, supplementary. So that means they add up to 180. So 180 minus 74 is 106. 106 degrees. Yeah, you gotta remember, guys. You gotta remember a 90 degree angle is like this, right? Those two angles were were big enough that they couldn't have added up. Sam's in the lead. Okay, RW is 17 and SV is 23. RW is 17 
and SV is 23, find TW. Just take a look at it. Alright, RW is 17, SV is 23, so what do I know about TW? They have to add up to 23, so 17 plus 6 is 23. Good job, class, you guys got that one, you nailed it. Nice. Okay. Find the value of Z so that EFGH is isosceles. Wow. Okay. If this is isosceles trapezoid, what do I know about these two angles? They are congruent. The base angles are congruent. So if I want to find Z, what do I have to do with those two? I set them equal. Okay, so you better get out that pen and paper. No, 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 not 7 Z times Z. If you add the power, you can square it. Yeah. So let's take a look, guys. I end up with 12Z squared, everyone pay attention, equals 7Z squared plus 20. What do I do? What's my first thing? Subtract 7Z squared. Everyone needs to be paying attention right now. Subtract 7z squared from both sides. What's 12z squared minus 7z squared? What's 12 minus 7? 5. So it's 5z squared equals 20. What's the next step? What do I do? Divide by 5. I get z squared equals, what's 20 divided by 5? 4. 4. Okay, what do I do with both sides now? I have to take the square root. That's how you cancel the square. Guys, pay attention. How do I cancel the square? I take the square root. What's the square root of 4? 2. two. Okay. So z equals 2. You better believe something like that is going to show up. Can we start the quiz? Um, if we're ready. We have two minutes. I think I can finish the next time. Okay. Um, but, but finish the Kahoot first. Okay. Find a z. AZ is the mid segment. What do I know? How do I get that? What do I do with the big? I add the two together and then divide by two. So 11.9 plus 7.1 is 0.1 plus 9 is 1. Plus this is 19. Right? I add the two together, they're 19. I divide it by 2. I get. 8.5. Does that make sense? I add the two together to get the mid segment. There you go. Okay. Any questions on that? All right. I know this was a lot, guys. We're going to spend a lot of time on this section on the review, but make sure you guys do that quiz. You have to do it by today, otherwise, you're going to go into the zero. So make sure you get Is it. Is that pretty much right? Yeah, because I'm due date today. I'll I'll figure something out for after this test for the kahoot, but I, I, I gotta make sure I do it in the right way so, so we're not getting too much of all the um, So all right. Shh, shh, shh. Guys, um start studying for your quiz. Do you have homework to do? You have homework to do, it's on my CCA for this section. Do that homework, listen to me guys. Try and do that homework tonight, this was a long lesson, you guys need to practice it. And do the quiz, and then make sure you start studying so y'all can get A's. Thank you. This week and Saturday. That's a good idea. Because you said you did the test on my head. I'm like, okay, now that's homework, so I think I'm good. Yeah, that's, and that's a good idea. Yeah, that's a lot. I have to finish that. I'm almost done. There's just a little bit left.
Let's take a look on Drea. I'm just wondering if I have anything missing. You do. You have less than 6.1 homework. That's really good. Yeah. Did I give it to you? Oh, that might have been the one you gave to me. Is that the one you dropped off on my desk? Yeah. Okay. I remember. I just told you to grab it before I put the grade in. All right, you're good. You're good. Okay, so now the cool. grade is what a little over. Yeah, should be good. I think you've got perfect scores on all the homework so far, so. Perfect. Good. Okay. Thank good you. Good job, Andrea. You're welcome. Finish the quiz? Yeah. Good job. Because I was already sore, because I was already sore from like, because I worked, because I literally like worked out like a day, like, like the, I worked out like yesterday, the day before we did it, so I was already sore, so, I don't know if I'm sore from that, or, <laughs> I'm, I think I'm fine now, why are you sore? Yeah, like my own How, how is that test you took about brain, did you agree on that? It was like a while ago, but you told me like, Oh, I like eight tests today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I definitely She didn't put the grades in there. That was on Monday. Green was hard, though. But I took it, even, even when I took it, the tests were like hard. Miss Chata. Who do you have? Um, Mercy. Yeah, because Miss Mercy was from Speech, and she had a baby when I took it. Yeah. I don't know, it was just weird. Well, yeah, it was I think I did that, but it's all good. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. Whatever. Well, I'm going to try to that he didn't penalize. Oh. You have a protractor? Yeah. And you went to me lose some dude. Oh, wait. Let's try that. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's so stupid. Yo, you got a protractor? Yo, you got a protractor?
I hope you all have your protractors today. I don't. I hope you do. Okay. So you guys should have some homework for me. I'm gonna come around and grade it. God bless you. Okay, so lesson sixteen point two. Um, it was the lesson performance task on page 850. Is it 850? 850. 850. Thank you. Nice. So you should have had a lesson performance task on lesson 850. Is it just this? Yeah, it's just that. Okay. The circles are so they're the same shape, but they're different sizes. Every circle will be. But it looks like they're like the different sizes of the shape. Yeah, but if they're if they're different sizes, that's okay as long as they're the same shape. Does that make sense? Okay. So similar. But shapes, different. Similar shapes have the same shape but different size. Okay. Does that make sense? That's the definition of similar. Okay. Sort of. Like similar shape, different size. Like. A congruent, two congruent shapes have the same size and shape, okay. but two similar shapes have the same shape but a different size. That's why it's similar. It's like not the same 100%. It's similar. Does that make sense? Yeah. That okay. Makes sense. All right. I don't know if I did that right. I just changed that now. Okay. So. Does this does this one you have to do with this or no? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Um, yeah, the, you have to. What you would have to have done. I'll explain it briefly. Okay. Wait, I'll you do have to use that Something like that. Okay. Something like that, Mr. Lorvik. Can I share 15? 15? You can show me 15.1 if you want. Sir. No, 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 15, one is what you do. Oh, yeah, I guess it's right there. There's three. Oh, good. No, 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 Did you do the lesson performance test? Six. Yeah, I did that. Okay. You're good on everything else? Yeah. I have a protractor. Oh, you do have a protractor. Oh, guys, by the way, you should all be pulling out your protractors. Everyone who's got a protractor that they brought from home, show it to me, please. Do you have one, Amanda? Yeah, I don't like that. Do you have one? No. Okay. All right. Good. Five extra credit points to you. Nicely done. I was confused. Okay. Okay. All right. Here's one. Oh, and with all the other makeup stuff that I do since I missed it, is it okay if I uh, work on it like a lot this week and send me pictures? Of, uh, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Just like. Send me one email for homework, okay. and then just in the title, yeah. tell me which assignment it is. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, so.
Quick question. Do we need the middle thing? No. No, but that's a cool thing to have. Well, I kind of want to take it off. Okay. <laughs> you can take it off, but it God bless you. Yeah, that's cool. Thanks. <laughs> Good. Five extra credit points. For what? For having a protractor. Nice. You guys have protractors, make sure you show me the protractor. You know. Okay. Hold this, and also like I have to look at that. I know. I know. What? Yeah. Hard work. And I have homework, and I didn't have homework. I'm busy. What was that? And I have last okay. class. Okay. Cool. Nice. Look at this, Alicia. Wow. Yes. You see that again. <laughs> you see wow. that again. So we can tell it when you're trying out everything. Wow. Praise God. Good job. I mean, that's story, man. I know I have to go after Alicia. Oh, it's good. You're good, man. You're good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Nice. Have you? That's what's up. I like it. Do you, Alicia, do you have a protractor with you? No, sir. Okay, that's all right. That's all right. Yeah, yes. I'll make an announcement. You'll, you'll, everyone's, a lot of people are in the same boat. Just don't worry. It's extra credit if you have it today. Can't have it. We're at 867. Okay, <laughs> 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 Oh, God forbid, I'm going to try to get it. Good job. Hi, guys. I get like a 50% thing. <laughs> no. What is that? <laughs> That's the half of a protract. That's what you got? It broke. Okay. You have to, I'm not giving you extra credit for it. You have to get a new one. You have to get a new one. Um, I'll give you. I'll give you one. I'll give you know. What, I'll give you two points. Well, th thank you, Mr. Manier. You're welcome. Good job, Andrew. Works. Yeah. Yeah. I have and I understand how to do this. Okay. All right, that's all right. Okay. Good job, Kai. Good job, man. Okay. Okay. Oh, I did not. Very good. Sure. I'll, I'll think I have my contract because it's snapped, I think. It's snapped what? I'm pretty sure I'm gonna snap. Alright, gotta get a new one. Okay. Oh my god. Have you been in a rock? I'm sorry, I don't talk to Jack anymore. No one talks to Jack anymore. Okay. Um so two things. First thing. 
protractors. Those of you who brought protractors today. Okay, so first thing, guys, it is disappointing to me that so few people brought protractors. I gave you like three days. I know that's not like a week or five weeks, it's like 25,000 weeks or whatever. No, it's just three days. But it's disappointing that so few people brought protractors. To me, that's like, man, that's a little bit, you know should have been able to grab it at this point. So um, know that that is disappointing to me, but I'm not going to dwell on it. So that's all I'm going to say about that. But other than that little personal tidbit, um, in terms of grades, you brought a protractor. If you brought a protractor today, you got five extra credit points. If you didn't bring it, you didn't get punished for it, but in the future you will. So what does that mean? Um, like I'll just take off, like I think what I'm going to do is um, just the first time, like after today, the first time you don't bring it, you're gonna get a point off your homework, okay? So you'll go from a five to a four. If you don't bring it the next homework assignment, still, still don't have it, then it'll be two points. After that, it'll be three points. After that, it'll be four points. After that, it's just like, you understand? So it's just gonna keep getting worse for you guys if you don't bring a protractor. Um, that's the whole idea. Obviously, I'm not gonna like start taking points off of your grade, but um, you just gotta bring it. You don't wanna have to do any weird punishments, especially if you're doing the work. You know, you should get credit for it, but you gotta have some kind of penalty um, for not doing what, you, what the expectations are. So that's the first thing. The second thing is a moment of praise. Um, Manuel and Alicia did a really great job with their homework. Yeah, and Ron, you guys got extra credit, so good job for going above and beyond. Um, with that, let's let's uh, pray. Let's pray, and then we'll be able to. Lord Jesus, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your forgiveness and for your heart of compassion. Lord, please bless us. All right, so let's just take a look really quick 
at the lesson performance task. I think that's a good idea. Um, and then we can move forward. Guys, you know what day it is today? That's right. It is definitely Friday. Friday? What? <laughs> okay.